All right, everybody, we've got a crossing in progress, and a crocodile has already smashed the first wildebeest, turning it around bodily, a full-grown wildebeest in the water. We are live at the moment on the Mara River here in Kenya, and this is just another one of these moments when you just got to root for the wildebeest. Although it's got being bitten now across the back, crocodiles, a couple of hundred pounds, at least five, six hundred pounds against the two or three hundred pounds from the wildebeest. Let's see what happens. Wildebeest putting up a brave fight now. Getting to shallower water. Come on, guy. What do you want to do? Get its feet around. A crocodile looks like it's got a good solid bite, though. Second hardest bite force behind an alligator. And so something miraculous is going to need to happen by this wildebeest for it to make it. Now, the commotion should start to draw the, the attention of other crocodiles in the area. Let's just have a look. Come on. What you really want to do is for it to end quite quickly with either the wildebeest having a chance of getting away or for it to go under the water and disappear. It's quite difficult to watch. Oh, that crocodile in no danger from either hooves or horns or being bitten by this wildebeest. This wildebeest trying to get its back legs under it. It looks like the crocodile's got a bite that is across the top with the back leg of the wildebeest in its throat. And that might actually work in the wildebeest's favor. Let's see. Oh, it's a massive crocodile. Easily the same size as this wildebeest. Maybe even bigger. Crocodile now using its body to drag. Come on, come on. Isn't that amazing? Now don't forget this is interactive. You can ask me questions. Now Marco says that he is rooting for the crocodile because they also need to eat. Marco, I'm sure lots of people will agree with you, although probably won't voice it. <laughs> but good comment there. They do need to eat. These large crocodiles actually only eat when their migration is on. I'm sure they, the odd carcass that floats down. Will, uh, will feed them, but the majority of the fat deposits that they put on their bodies are very similar to polar bears or grizzly bears when the fish are running. And lean times. Well, polar bears with seals in the birthing season and grizzly bears when the salmon are running, at other times, pickings are slim or with other food sources. Wildebeest just having a bit of a rest. We've seen this quite often. Now, Jennifer, you say your stomach is churning. I must agree with you. It is horrifying to think that not only is this happening to this wildebeest, but it could happen to you. There we go. Quite often these wildebeests rally. They have a bit of a rest. Adrenaline has a chance to set in. Their brains start working again. And they start to think, what benefits have I got? Bank just, just within their nose, nose read. Riti, you want to know? How many crocodiles there are? Riti, in this particular crossing yesterday of this size, we saw way over 20. So uh, there are a lot of crocodiles. It's amazing, actually, that these crocodiles have not come through here. Here's a hippo. What is a Hippopotamus. It's amazing that we're not actually seeing more crocodiles reacting to this. Maybe there's another crossing going on. Let's just go wide and see what's going on. No. So... Still just the battle, the one battle going on at the moment is between this wildebeest and this crocodile. Andy, you want to know how crocodiles swim backwards? I think what's happening here is the crocodile is just using the current to try and carry this wildebeest into deeper water. What it would want to do is use its bulk and its muscles to try and just bring the wildebeest head underneath the water. And what's happening now is this wildebeest is actually getting further away from the bank. It looks like it's still got some footing there. Just look at that. Come on, guys. Now, just though you wanted to know if these crocodiles do a death roll to kill the animals. Um, very similar to sharks, crocodiles do roll. They don't roll, though, to kill the animals. They roll to disembowel and dismember animals. So what this crocodile could do is twist a little bit to get this wildebeest to go under the water. There's a crocodile at the back next to that rock, not, not helping in any way at the moment. I'm not trying to come in at any way at the moment. This wildebeest looks like it's got its feet under it. Difficult to see. So just to finish off that comment, they'll, they'll use their bulk to try and drown the wildebeest. But they will use the roll to try and tear off chunks to eat uh, once it's dead. Oh, come on. What's going to happen? I think we're going to, the, the bend in the river is going to catch us before the, 
before that we know the outcome of this battle. Now, Francis, you want to know if the wildebeest could kick the crocodile off? Francis, there's a possibility that that could happen, but I think that it is... Okay, no, we've lost it. They've gone around the bend in the river now, everybody, and so we've lost that particular battle. Oh, what a pity. I'd love to know what happens to that one. My feeling, though, is that that crocodile's bite was a little bit too deep and a little bit too set, and all that crocodile needed to do was just wait for the wildebeest to tire out, pull it into deeper water, and then pull it down. There you have what's left of the crossing, and, of course, everyone else that has been enjoying this crossing with us. It's an open reserve, and, of course, tourists can come and, uh, and enjoy these sites firsthand. We've just got a lucky prime seat. All right. I think that that is that crossing over us for now. Don't forget, we will send you a notification uh, if you subscribe and let you know when we're going live, obviously, and we'll sit here and wait and see what else happens today. See you a bit later.